Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Oliver King and this is my photography channel. And in this video, what I'm going to do is just run through what I do for creating flat lays and selling them on platforms like Shutterstock and Adobe Stock. I got a few things for Christmas, so I have a lot of stuff laying around that's been unused and unmarked. So I'm thinking this is a good time to make some flat lays. And so what I'm going to do is just use some natural light, use some newer lights that I've got back here as well. They're relatively inexpensive, but I'm just going to try and put together some flat lay things and give you some tips for how to put this together yourself and then how to upload these to some platforms as well so you can make some money with this. So let's get to the first one. One thing to note too is that flat lays are usually done from the top down perspective um, and you just completely overhead. But what I'm going to do is have some variations in the angles here as well since we have our stuff set up anyways. What we're trying to do is create kind of effective backgrounds where uh, we have some sort of item and then a little bit of room for text so that people could use our images for different things on different uh, different platforms. So if somebody wants it for their website, we're leaving room for some text on one side and then we have our images laid out so that it's not overly crowded. And what I'll have to just mind is my aperture. So I don't wanna have a crazy low aperture like 1.8. I think I'll try and sit in the 2.8 to four range just because uh, I want everything to be in focus. I don't want anything to be blurred or out of focus because you'll get flagged for those things if you're up uploading those to, to stock photography platforms. So we'll be making sure we try and keep a good aperture. And yeah, I'm gonna try shooting down with the 85 millimeter and then I might switch out and try the 16, but sometimes the wide angle distorts things. So I don't know if that's gonna be a perfect perspective. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is uh, I'm gonna keep the backdrop that's white over here, and I'm gonna use some scarves to kind of create my background. These will be nice because they're a little bit more muted colors and I think they have a nice outdoorsy feel. So I'm just gonna see if I can kind of match them up here a little bit, get my lines all straight. And I think one of the hardest things about flat lights is just getting your lighting correct. So I'm gonna light this from two angles. I'm gonna light it from the side, I'm gonna light it from over here, and then I'm gonna have it reflected off the back just to kind of get rid of all of the shadows that are gonna be present. Because those are the hardest things, in my opinion, to get rid of. And add a half flooding knife. Got some pans here. Got a little camping stove thing here. So maybe I'll take the fishing lure out for now. Now comes the fun part of the flat lay, which is going to be just adjusting it so that you have a more visually appealing thing to look down on. And the other thing we're gonna do here too is since we're selling this online, we can't have any brand names in it, so we're gonna hide all of our logos. I don't know if you can see the one right here, but anything that's logo-ish, we're gonna try and hide that so that we don't have to edit it out in post because that's just kind of a pain in the ass. All right, well, I think we're making some progress here. So that first shoot, I was just making lots of adjustments, just kind of moving the position of everything, lining up my lines, covering up logos, just doing all the sort of manual editing you can do so that it saves you a lot of time in post. So I just kind of went for a little bit more muted colors there. You can see I left space a lot of the time for, for copy. And so people can write on these images, they can use them as backgrounds. So that's kind of the idea of what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to keep them minimalistic and not really cluttered. So. Uh, that's kind of the idea I was going with for this one. So I'm going to adjust now and we're going to use some different colors. We're going to bring in some other objects and you can just see what I'm doing. Right, for this shoot, what I'm going to do is kind of use a little bit more of a tan color background. So I got just a t-shirt here that I'm using as my texture. And it's kind of nice because it's kind of an unironed shirt. And so it's going to just have these nice lines in it. And I think it'll go well with the paper that I'm trying to put on here. So kind of matching up the background, I guess, with the subject that you're putting on top of it. That's something I'm gonna give a, give a shot at doing here. So we're gonna just try a little bit harder here to get these to look a little bit more orderly. And you can see one of the main problems is just these shadows that you create. And one of the things is I'm losing sunlight here because it's getting a little bit darker. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just adjust my lighting so it's closer. I'm just gonna bring that in nice and close to eliminate the shadows. And also use things like this backdrop that we've got here just to reflect a little bit more of that light and get rid of some of those shadows. So as you can see, I'm just kind of messing around with this a little bit. I guess one of the things that is really good to do, and I see a lot of other people besides me doing this, is just elevating things slowly. So make a small adjustment and see what you could do to elevate it. So this image here, it's a little bit boring, right? There is some plain space for text, but I think we could add a little something. So let's go find a little object we could tuck in there just to make this a little bit more interesting, make it pop a little bit more. All right, now that we've created our images, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just show you one of the websites that I upload to for stock photography here. And this one is Wirestock. So Wirestock is the one 
that uh, when you upload to it, it's going to upload to multiple platforms like Shutterstock, Adobe Stock, I think Pond5, and a few other websites. I might not be accurate on which ones exactly, but it uploads to multiple ones and sells on different platforms. So I'm going to choose this just to save myself a little bit of time. So I'm going to hit upload. I'm going to go into uh, the files that I created recently. So this is all on the 27th. And then I'm going to open these. And then they're just going to upload here. Now, one of the nice things about Wirestock 2 is that if you select easy submission on here, I believe you get to skip the um, you get to skip the keywording process. However, it has a little bit of um, a little bit of a thing down here that allows you to add specific information about your photos. So they'll probably draw on that for the keyword creation, and this will help it be a little bit more specific. So if there's a specific time or place or um, you know, just specific information that identifies what feeling you were supposed to have in your photo, then you can throw it in there. Uh, otherwise, they'll generate the keywords for you and then upload them into those uh, into those um, different channels. So yeah, so big time saver. And uh, I'm just going to keep trying it out a little bit more and more as time goes on. I hope it was useful to kind of see how I do some of the flat lay stuff. These ones, I'm not sure if they're going to sell or not. You never know. Uh, but it's kind of nice to go through the whole process of messing around with things and seeing how complex or how simple you can make it. I always err to the side of simple because uh, complex can look a little bit extra, I guess, if you're trying to use these as backgrounds. So going more simple with maybe three objects is a good thing to do. And if you have some little decorative things in your house, you can just borrow those for a little bit and then put them back when you're done, which is what I'm going to do because I've made a really big mess here. So the reason I kind of brought up flat lace as an idea is because you can do them inside, you can do them without anybody else's help. And as long as you have time and a few little objects to work with, you can create some pretty cool stuff that people can use. Uh, my advice would be to just go for objects that uh, are kind of like relevant, I guess, to the public conversation. And it's not going to be a um, market that's kind of got way too much content in it. Picking things that are a little bit more niche, always a good idea. Anyways, thanks for watching the video. I hope it was useful to you and we'll catch you in the next one.